Hello there, Lies of P fans. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a little rant review of my playthrough of this game. First of all, I want to point out what does this game remind you of? I think it was inspired by Batman. What does Champion Victor look like? Vain. Come on, you got to see it. You got to see this is vain. Someone is a Batman fan. Who does Vanini remind you of? Doesn't he just look like a Bruce Wayne? He is rich. He owns a factory that built all these puppets. He's a genius. I don't know. Batman wasn't a genius, but he utilized a lot of technology to do the things he did. And here we have Vanini, where his parents died by a murderous puppet. And guess what the murderous puppet's name is? The Riddler! Well, the King of Riddles, who reminds me of the Riddler. Definitely someone who was designing this game was inspired by Batman. Uh, I'm like, come on. It's, it's right there. Down to having a puppet that murdered Fanini's family and happens to spew out a bunch of riddles. Come on. This is so obvious. It's not just about Pinocchio here. And who does Pulcinella remind you of? Come on, I'll give you a second. Alfred! Come on, he looks like Alfred. Even the British accent? Come on, totally an Alfred. And the fact that he is the butler to Vanini, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne. We're talking about Batman dynamics here. All right. Now for my little critique, my so-called review, which is not really going to be a formal review. It's more like going to be a rant. Me talking about the things I liked about this game and the things that I hate about this game. Maybe I should talk about the things I hate first. One of the things that always irks me, it's my pet peeve, it is my red flag for every game out there. I hated it in Demon Souls. I hated it in Re Resident Evil 7, even though those were really good games. What did they have in common? They had a weight capacity. I don't like games with weight capacities. If they can do me a solid, I would want them to lower the weight capacity. So all the items just drop them a little bit because I hate the fact that I have to put more ergo into capacity because to have the better equipment on me and even have you know certain weapons or have two weapons with the extra buff of all the armor it jacked up the weight so much and no matter what i did it was always on slightly heavy and there's a big difference between being on slightly heavy versus not having any weight whatsoever because your character is able to move around more freely and leap around when you're slightly heavy that kind of changes and of course when you run on heavy you're really kind of like rolling with a lot of weight you can tell and that's a no-no and and in a game like this where there's a huge big difference between the fighting style of the enemies versus you i feel like you're moving a lot more slower with your character versus the bosses or other enemies in this game like it's ridiculously fast half the time you can't even see the attacks especially with the final boss it's very difficult to see the attacks i feel like you need to just like guard up and just take whatever regain you can get half the time i didn't even accomplish that either i had to use my shield a lot and i had to use throwables which is okay i'm okay with that another thing that i didn't like the most was the fact that the camera angle once in a while if you got locked in the wall or a corner or if you went under the boss like some of the bigger bosses like the the archbishop the whole character would just disappear like all of you would just disappear and it would just be like a blank back it would just be the background and of course you will see the boss bar but you don't see the enemy and you don't even see yourself so you're like i'm basically just fighting blind so if they could fix that, it would be great. I never had that issue with other games before. 
<laughs> By the way, I am not comparing this to the other From Software games. I think this game has proven that it is own entity outright. I'm an artist myself and I hate being compared to other artists because I am my own being. I may have been inspired by some artists or I just naturally adapted to other things, but I understand this company kind of use similar mechanics, but it doesn't mean that they're just a knockoff. This is very beautifully done. A lot of work has gone into it. Obviously, a lot more thought as well to try to make it a lot more challenging, which they accomplished that. Ended up being a very difficult game to play on the market. Really, it's just meant for a gamer to challenge themselves. I understand people have large, fragile egos because they became professional at other games, especially like Sekiro or Bloodborne or Elden Ring, Dark Souls. I understand that. That's just having a, an ugly, inflated ego. Just go about the game, enjoy it for what it is, and stop complaining because you're not good at it. Or you're good at it, but you're just like not really respecting the hard work that goes into this game. Because there's a big difference between being a gamer versus a developer. I even know the difference of that because you're having multiple people who are coming up with the story, coming up with the art coming up with the play mechanics and if they use something that's similar that's familiar that's okay because otherwise if they throw something that's unfamiliar onto the market not a lot of people are going to be drawn to it and then I think the reason people got drawn to this game right away is because it has a sense of familiarity to the other from software games but in its own right, the story is up front. The story is pretty dang good. I like steampunk style Pinocchio. That is a plus. That thumbs up for that. As for me re recommending this game to people, I would. But I would have to warn them, you have to have patience with a game like this. You have to be okay with dying a lot of times. You're not going to get it right on the first playthrough. I know it's hard to fathom that you have to develop patience for a game like this, but you kind of do. You have to learn perfect guard, at least get a few perfect guards in or, uh, you know, get yourself to the point where you can get the shield. The shield is amazing. As you can see, I really take down a lot of my enemies just by putting up my shield and having a one-handed weapon and it deals a lot of damage. Another thing I did that helped a lot, especially if new players want to try this game out. I suggest getting the elemental weapons and putting some stuff into your advance, which will upgrade the damage of your elemental weapons, at least through your first playthrough until you get used to the other weapons. My favorite weapon in this game is actually the trident because it has a very advanced piercing effect it's got like a critical hit a critical rate which it's amazing it's one of the only weapons that actually does it without getting the the grinder to bring to make your weapon have critical hit there's different grinders you collect in this game especially the ones that are elemental but the one that does perfect guard brings up your critical hit and all that is pretty good too especially if you're just dealing with a regular weapon as for the elements, I, I suggest learning to use that on your first playthrough because I'm on New Game Plus and I'm not even using the elemental weapons anymore, but they're all upgraded to the T. And in New Game Plus, you do have access to the gold coin fruit tree right when you get to the Crot Hotel. Just a spoiler right there if you do make it past that point. So don't worry about having access to the statue right away. Actually, you do get access to the Statue of Mercy still, but you have access to the gold coin fruit tree. The door is open for you to go in and get your coin fruit 
and change your stats if you want. So there's no sweat on that. I like that little feature right there that they changed up. It was the best upgrade they ever did. As for my final thoughts to this game, the final boss, the Nameless Puppet, was the hardest boss other than the Archbishop. I think everything from in between was just mild in comparison because even though the Nameless Puppet is optional, it will be that hardest foe if you choose to fight it meaning you refuse to give Geppetto your heart. I love that option. It felt like a very much stark difference between Simon and the Nameless Puppet, which is the same thing I get from other titles. It's like you're given like this final boss in an area and then you realize, oh crap, <laughs> the hardest bosses are always optional. But I was satisfied. In the end, it was a game that I really, truly enjoyed. I felt challenged, even though my perfectionist nature was in full bloom because I was missing out on a lot of side quests, which that's why I restarted this game so many times just to get all of it. And I think I got a good portion of it. I know someone mentioned I missed some dialogue, especially from the, the King of Riddles and... While I play a new game plus, I will eventually reach that point and try to exhaust all the dialogue possible with all the NPCs. Just so I don't miss out on anything, I also am planning to collect all the records. The soundtrack is gorgeous. The music in this game is phenomenal. Other than the fact that I love steampunk style, the music was on point... The sound effects are amazing. I like the sound of when you guard, you hear that clink sound. And it just makes you feel like you're in a real fight and enjoying the whole experience. Not to mention the story itself is pretty dang good. It took a already grim story and just made it grimmer. But put a twist in there of like, you know, comparing it to Wizard of Oz. And I'm like, I was so excited when I saw Dorothy at the end of this game. And I was like, OMG, they're doing a mesh here. And then somebody mentioned, I'm like, Pinocchio is probably like the Tin Man. And I was like, oh man, maybe we're going to have a, a whole like parallel universe like, uh, companionship where eventually we're gonna have to find the scarecrow i'm like the scarecrow is always looking for a brain and you know p has a heart and everything and then we have dorothy and i'm really excited about that and also i'm glad i unlocked the better ending on my first playthrough even though i've had done many slots already with this and i enjoyed it all I think I have nothing else to say about it. I'm like, I hope other people take up this game and just enjoy something challenging as well as delve into the story of this game. Enjoy the outfits because they're cute and they really have no benefit to your character other than just style. But either way, thank you for watching my gameplay if you guys have been watching. Or if you're listening to my rants, thank you for listening to me as well. I'm going to give myself a break from this game and crack open a bottle of wine. And you guys have a good night.
good to see you. PlayStation.